Hello, today we are going to be setting up a Nextcloud server. I have a fresh Debian install on a Vulture server. Vulture is just uh, the VPS I use. You can use, you can do this at home or on a virtual server like this, but this is a fresh install of Debian. It's minimal uh, and we are going to install it locally natively. I don't know how to say it. We're not using any packages like Docker or Flatpak or anything, anything like that. There's a lot of tutorials out there on doing that. I don't really use those type of things. So I want to show you how to set up Apache, set up the database, and then install Nextcloud. Should only take maybe 10 minutes. Uh, I have all the notes, so let's go ahead and jump right in over here on uh, the computer. I'm going to not edit any of this. There's going to be a few parts where we have to wait for things to go, but I want you to see how long this takes. First of all, uh, so on the left here, we are at the fresh Debian install. And over on the right, we're at filmsbychris.com. Let's go ahead and go to software here, and then we will click on notes right here. And here you can search through all my notes. And I'm just going to type in Nextcloud. And I'm going to go to this Nextcloud install and setup. This is the script that we're going to be following or the commands we're going to be following. There should be a link directly to this in the description of this video. Uh, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to set some variables. I'm going to download Nextcloud uh, from the website, just the zip file. Uh, the current at the time recording this is 28. Uh, I would go there and make sure you have the most current version. Uh, right before I recorded this video, I was following these notes and I had written them a while ago and it was version 24. And when I went to install it, it wasn't compatible with the current PHP modules I had installed. So make sure you have the most current here and your Debian's up to date. And I recommend using Debian stable because I once tried Debian unstable with Nextcloud and the, the packages were too new for Nextcloud at that point. Anyway, I'm going to set some variables here just for later on in the script for where we're going to download from and the password for our Nextcloud database. So you're going to want to, you know, create your own uh, password for the database. Next, we're going to update our package uh, manager, our repositories, and then we're going to install Apache 2 and Maria database, uh, both server and client. So I have it set up. Uh, I set up a domain name for this, uh, nexttest2 uh, dot films by Chris. So the subdomain, it's not going to work once you guys see this video. I'm going to remove it after that. And as you can see, I'm going to it and nothing's happening, but Apache's running on the server. So why can't we do this? If you're at home, you're going to have to open up a port on your router. Uh, in your virtual machine, you may need to open up those ports as well. So on Vulture, I'm just going to use uh, IP tables here, and this will open up port 80 and port 443. Now, theoretically, if I come here, there we go, Debian's up and running. Okay, going back to our notes here, next we're going to install some PHP modules we need uh, for Nextcloud. So we're just going to install those using our package manager. That should only take a moment. And once that is done, I am then going to use MySQL uh, as, and you're going to want to, you know, set up your database settings, you, you know, set passwords and stuff. And we're setting it up here for Nextcloud. So what it's going to do is it's going to go into our Nextcloud, our, 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 this server's MySQL, and it's going to create a database called Nextcloud DB. Then it's going to create a user called Nextcloud or Nextcloud user. And it's going to set that user's password to this. This is not the user you're logging in as. This is the username and password that Nextcloud itself in the background is going to use to access the database. So we're creating that database, setting users, and we're flushing the privileges. Next, I'm just going to move into my temp directory, and we're going to download Nextcloud. So we're downloading this zip file here, which again, make sure you're using the most current one. So you can just take this URL and just cut off the last part to releases and see what the newest version is. Currently, it's 28.0.2. Once that is unzipped, uh, I have a lot of pseudo commands in here, but I am running as root over here just because it's a brand new machine that doesn't have any users. But I'm going to move into my web directory, and then I'm going to unzip that zip file we just downloaded. Then we're going to recursively change all the permissions for the Nextcloud folder to be www-data. Www That's the Apache uh, web user on and group on your device. And then we're also going to change all the permissions on those files to 775. So that's just permission stuff to make sure everything works. Next, let's go ahead and set up CertBot. So we're going to install CertBot and Python CertBot for Apache. Once that's done, we will then run the command. Now, again, if you're running this at home and you open up a port, you may not be using port 80. Uh, when I'm at home here, I use a different port 
to connect to my next cloud server for many reasons, but I'm pretty sure CertBot needs port 80 to be open and pointed to this web server. So take that into account. If you're doing this at home and you have your forwarding ports on the router while setting up CertBot, which you'll have to do at least every three months, I think you have to recert, uh, you're gonna have to open up that port 80 on your router and point it to your server. I'm not gonna go over that in this video. I actually have a script that runs automatically in a cron job, cron job that opens up that port port on the on the router points it to the correct machine runs certbot and then closes that port so here it's going to ask you some questions so it's going to ask for an email address that it will send information to when it's needed to update i'm just going to give it my junk mail account feel free to email that account it's my junk mail account uh, use it for junk i won't see anything you send to it uh okay next it's asking uh if we trust if we agree to its licensing yes next i ask if it's okay if they share your email address or something. I'm going to say no to that. And then here it's asking for the domain. And in my case, again, I open, I set the domain to uh, nexttest2.filmsbychris.com. We, whoops, let me see. I thought I could, I'll just type it out because I don't think it wants the HTTP. But next. Uh, test2.filmsbychris.com. So that's just where it's going to look. It's going to create certificates and try to test them against that domain. And that's why you need port 80 open. Should only take a moment. And we're good. We now have SSH installed, or sorry, uh, uh, HTTPS, secure, SSL certificates. So now I can go to this server with HTTPS and it should, yep. So I'm at the same web server with uh, security enabled, which you definitely want when you're running with a Nextcloud server. This next part of the script is if you don't have a domain name, it just gives you your IP address and then you can go to it because you can access the Nextcloud server without uh, security uh, keys, but you don't want that because everyone will see your traffic. So we should, in theory, be able to go to Nextcloud, uh, the folder on our server. So that, and it actually worked that time. Earlier when I tested it, it told me a whole bunch of modules weren't loaded. And although I could uh, enable those modules individually. I have in the notes here, you know, if you get that error, the easiest thing right there is to just reboot. Okay, so now Nextcloud is up and running. I'm going to create a user. So this is a user you're going to be logging in as, and we will set up a password. I don't care what it is at this point, uh, but a password you're going to remember. Uh, it should automatically have the proper folder for Nextcloud unless you are linking things differently, which some people do. Next, it's asking for your uh, user, for the database, the password, and the usernames, or the database name, which are all stuff we set in our script here. So if we go back here, uh, we're using uh, NextCloudDB as the name of the database. So the database name. Next, we'll look at the user, which we set. These are all things we set up here when we created the database. So I just called NextCloud underscore user for the user. And this is all stuff that's going to be running in the background. This is not what you're logging in as with NextCloud. And then the password I set up here. Of course, it would be whatever password you do. And of course, it's going to be connecting back to the local host, meaning when it's doing database stuff, it's not going out to the network, it's just doing everything locally. I'll click install. It should only take a few moments here, but it's going to set up things. It's going to create this user uh, using these credentials. It will use that password and then it should log us in. Now here, for some reason, it's trying to forward us to Nextcloud, uh, like the website. And I don't know why it does that. It may be a glitch in the current version of Nextcloud I'm using, but I'll just go back to my Nextcloud to filmsbychris.com and there we go. Uh, since I just filled that out, it's logging me in as that user I created. It gives me a welcome screen and we now have Nextcloud up and running and I am logged in currently as you know, an administrative user. Uh, so now I can go start installing applications like calendars and contacts and office stuff. I also have a quick note here at the bottom. Um, oh, so yeah, actually a few more things to do. These aren't required, but suggested. You're gonna be wanting to upload, uh, you know, larger files. Uh, so you're gonna to wanna to change some Apache configuration stuff. So if you just run this command, it should automatically, if, if the configuration file doesn't change, this is just changing a memory limits. Once you do that, you're going to want to restart Apache. That should only take a moment. And then I'm going to go into this file for Apache. And let me just forward slash and look for grant. And this one that says var www, because that's where my next cloud is, I am going to change that from none to all. Save that, and again, I'll just restart Apache. 
And that's just uh, making sure sim links are working properly and that you set up larger file limits. And then down here, this is just a command. So when you're in xCloud, you can do pretty much everything through the web interface, but you can also do stuff through the shell. So if you wanted to, for in this case, I am you can install applications like this. That's just an example. But I'm not going into the use of NextCloud in this video. I'm just going into how to install it. But again, that's how you install NextCloud. Uh, it looks like altogether this video was 10 minutes and that includes a little intro and stuff. So yes, less than 10 minutes of install time from beginning to end. So I do thank you for watching. Filmsbychris.com. Again, I'll try to link to my notes there. Uh, but again, I showed you at the beginning, filmsbychris.com. Click on software, go to notes, and then search for NextCloud. Uh, so you can look there and follow those notes. Again, I don't update that script regularly because I'm not regularly installing new instances of NextCloud, uh, but make sure you're using the most current version of NextCloud uh, and so you don't get any module in, uh, that modules can't connect. Because for if you're using Debian stable, you should be good if you're using the most current version of NextCloud. If you're using Debian unstable, you're gonna have too new of modules in some cases. And if you're using an older version of NextCloud, the modules might be too new for, or too, yeah, same thing, gonna be too new. So just make sure you do things up to date. And I once a month, uh, make sure that I update my next cloud, which can be done through the web interface or the shell. But thank you for watching filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. I hope you found this useful and I hope that you have a great day.